If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of no fees. If you're on Xbox and need some game to score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Ken Zretro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've made history on this podcast because first, for the first time ever, I've got a guest helping me for this week's edition of the podcast. Hello, my fellow Latter-day Saints, Kenzie Gretchel, the woman entertainer here, the most inspirational woman in all of Asia. And uh, back with Paige once again. She was here yesterday for uh, Pac-Man World, yeah. which you can see with an annotation at the end of this podcast. But uh, today it's the Trophy Achieving Podcast, the the, your one-stop shop for all the latest gaming news and rumours and of course at the end of the show those sweet points and trophies in the Trophy Achievement Hunter section. <laughs> so, there is a lot of juicy news this week and um, we've got some map changes for Season 4 of Fortnite Battle Royale. Uh, there's news re regarding an update for the Binding of Isaac. You get that. Um, there's a new... A uh, new weapon and vehicle in the latest update for PUBG, which is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, for those who are not in the know. Um, we've got um, news and f we've got the news on the FIFA 18 World Cup mode, because the, with the World Cup just around the corner. And we've got Destiny 2's Warmind DLC Crucible Maps revealed. We'll go over those. Uh, this one page was really interested in retro soundtracks getting a vinyl revival now that's going to be interesting to read about and um, we'll say this one caught my attention games no longer games are no longer a place where actors careers go to die and this is an article on the uh, bbc news website and uh, we'll get into that later uh more uh, more news regarding player on those battlegrounds 43 percent of online gamers have used cheats to gain competitive advantages Hmm, yeah. And uh, while we're on the subject of Pac-Man, like we mentioned Pac-Man World just, uh, just, uh, uh, just there. Uh, Pac-Man Stories game announced for Amazon Alexa? How that's gonna work? I don't know. But I'm sure we will find out the details very soon. And of course, in the points and trophies section, um, uh, Super Mega Baseball 2 not only came out yesterday, uh, yesterday, because I'm recording this on Wednesday, going it will go up on Friday. Um, this, uh, but it's also free for the whole of May as part of Xbox Games with Gold. Uh, so there we go. Uh, that is that's the news articles we're going to be covering this week, and we've also got our for for me a gaming screw up of the week because I cannot make heads or tails of why they have. It's not EA for those in the know. For the, say, just, just, for the, just for those in the know. Okay, um, okay, because um, I, I do like to I do like to nitpick everything that uh, EA and Activision do wrong, and uh, Activision have done something here uh, regarding uh, teaming up with Nielsen. The, 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 say, uh, for those in America, the, the Nielsen, the TV rating system. You guys know about that. Uh, so we're going to get into that very shortly, but uh, before that, I've got a couple of things to show you. Um, right. Um, right, so there we go. I'll just uh, the camera. Right, so there we go. Right, basically, what this is, Boomerang Rentals. Uh, this is where that's. Let's see. This is a very. This is a fantastic service that I've, that I've used for just over a, uh, around about a year now. And it's actually it's actually saved me a lot of money in the long run there. Rather than buying all the games outright, uh, I can actually rent them for a fraction of what it would actually cost to buy at the store. Um, I think then, and this, and this is where I actually promote the service. Uh, I think it's primarily for the U it's primarily for those in the UK, but I don't know if they actually ship. I don't know if they ship worldwide, but I'm sure those world. I'm sure. You, Guys that are watching worldwide, you'll be able to find um, other rental game uh, services. But for, for here in the UK, Boomerang Rentals packages start from as little as three pounds ninety nine a month. 
If you sign up today, you get a 21 day free trial and you get three free game rentals before your subscription begins. Nice. Depending on the package you choose, I've, I've got one of the um, I've got one of the higher tier packages, meaning I can meaning I can actually play the latest games when they come out. And uh, there's no late fee, so you can keep the game as long as you like. Essentially, you could 100% the game if you wanted, and then return it once you're done there. Uh, or you can keep the game forever and, and by buying it at a discounted price on the online store. That's boomerangrentals.co.uk. For me, it's the best place to rent your games. And then um, there's an actually shot. Uh, sorry, the, the, the Last of Us. It's one of one of the most critically ga acclaimed games. Of all time. I've heard of it, yeah. Yeah, because they've, they've got a sequel coming out uh, either later this year or at some point next year. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be too surprised if they actually showcase some of it at E3 this year. Mm. But anyway, we've got a lot to we've got a lot to get through. So let's start off with our gaming screw up of the week. Let's all laugh at an industry that never learns anything. Tee hee hee. And this week's gaming screw up comes from Activision. Now, why on earth would Activision screw up something here? Why did Activision Blizzard partner with Neil? So, I'll say Activision and Blizzard are two, uh, they're basically under the same roof, but Activision take care of um, the Call of Duty games. Yeah. Whereas Blizzard, they primarily focus on PC gaming, things like uh, StarCraft, uh, World of Warcraft. Um, Heroes of the Storm, it's, um, it's one of these uh, mobile games like uh, Dota or League of Legends. Uh. Mm. But anyway, let's see what they've done. Why did Activision Blizzard partner with Nielsen? This is going to be interesting. Right, so here we go. Nielsen to measure and value eSports brand investment. Okay. So, it m so I'm thinking it might be something to do with um, shareholding. Mm. Anyway, let's see what the article says. On April 16th, Activision Blizzard ATVI pff, that happened, uh, announced that it partnered with Nielsen. Ah, right, so that's what it is. Uh, the ATVI, that's the... Um, oh, okay. that, that would be the acronym they would use for the sh for like uh, shareholding. That's what it would be. And Nielsen is N-L-S-N. -N. Hey, learn something new today, folks. Nielsen is expected to measure and value esports brand investments across ATVI's various leagues and gaming titles. Well, like I say, that would include things like, um, like Destiny, Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Starcraft, all those things. Um, according to the deal agreement, Nielsen will calculate and measure brand exposure in esports events across several of ATV's gaming titles, event formats, and geographical locations. Hmm, interesting. Right, so let's, let's increase this slightly. Oh, oh, oh I'm a bit elder. Uh, it should be okay. Hmm, let's see. Right. Can't quite make that out. Um, but apparently it looks like... Ah, uh... Okay, right. Uh, so it looks like. Hmm. So the esports worldwide marketing revenue estimate in millions. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. Right. So they're they're estimating by the end of the year the um the market revenue they're estimating reaching. Somewhere in the region of one point six billion dollars. That's quite. That's quite a sizable yeah. amount. That's quite a sizable amount. But anyway, let's let's see what else it says. Nielsen is expected to use the same methodology that it uses to quantify value and benchmark performance in the traditional sports space. Activision Blizzard CEO for esports Pete Vlas Vlastelka, however you pronounce that. Stated, as eSports continues to mature and reach its potential as a standalone business, we're determined to lead the way and develop best practices for brands and advertisers. Um, he continued saying, we're excited to partner with the most experienced and respected measurement service in Nielsen and continue building 
on our foundation of esports leagues in the world. So it turns so that so based on that, it turns out Nielsen doesn't just t deal with TV ratings; it also deals with deals with this apparently. Hmm. Makes more sense. Well, I, I can understand. I can understand them expanding to a broad, uh, mm. expanding to a, a much broader field of entertainment. But to me, but for me, I, th I, th I think this is just Activision just trying to get more money out of people. Yeah, a little bit of passion. It wouldn't surprise me. Mm -hmm. It would not surprise me at this point, because they because they already get a lot of money out of Call of Duty fans every year. I mean, sixty dollars for the game, forty dollars for the season pass. That's a hundred quid right out of the gate. Yep. Nielsen is expected to track events such as the Overwatch League, Overwatch World Cup. Oh, I forgot about Overwatch. Uh, Overwatch Contenders and the Call of Duty World League with plans to expand into other events in the future. Uh, Esports estimated to reach $1.7 billion in 2021. That's actually not far off in the long run. In the grand scheme of things, that's not far off. Yeah, like two and a half years. Exactly. Wow, okay. Yeah, so, uh, as shown in the chart above, which um, as I said, didn't, didn't exactly, couldn't exactly read it. Uh, clearly, because the chart didn't exactly increase in size, but uh, as shown in the chart above, the global esports market is estimated to reach $1.7 billion by 2021, up from $906 million in 2018, which is where we're at just now. In the previous part of this series, which I say this is the first time I've actually covered this, uh, in the previous part of this series, we saw how Activision Blizzard is looking to gain traction in the esports market with the Overwatch League and Call of Duty World League events. ETBI's peer Electronic Arts has also launched an esports gaming league. Hmm. Now why does that not surprise me? Both Activision and EA trying to get more money out of us. Yep. Good luck getting money from me folks. <laughs> right, now let's get into the real meat of, let's get into the real meat of this. I mean, Fortnite Battle Royale, very popular at the moment. Uh -huh. And uh, I covered, I covered in my podcast last week that apparently the the next Call of Duty game is going to have a battle royale mode, uh -huh. just just to try and cash in on the battle royale popularity. But 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 back to Fortnite for a moment. There's map changes for season four. Huh. So it turns out the meteor Easter egg from season three has hit and changed the landscape of the Fortnite Battle Royale. Altering the map and signalling the start of season four. Oh, okay. So let's get this up. Let's see if I can. Um, let's see if I can. There we go. Right. So there we go. So there's the map. And the. Where's the? Ah. So there. Um. Well, uh, well, I'll I'll get an I'll get a snapshot of the uh, I'll get a snapshot of the of the map up uh, just here. Dusty divots. That must be where the meteor hit. Oh. And as a result, it changed part of the map. Oh. Okay. I. That is actually quite clever, because. Can we like? Can we like? It says up here, the meteor Easter egg, because because Fortnite players uh -huh. saw a meteor over the map. So it's a little nod to. Yeah, it's actually it's actually continuing this. This is that is actually very clever. Well played, guys. Very well played. Okay. What exactly was changed in each in each section below? Each section below focuses on a new area on the map or an existing one that has changed. If you if you catch anything we missed, feel free to edit the list by hitting the edit button, edit page at the bottom. I, I, I'm, I'm not too concerned about editing that. Right, so anyway, here we go. Dusty Divot. The biggest and most obvious change is the destruction of Dusty Depot and its reinvention into Dusty Divot. The meteor has hit and left a giant crater at the centre of the map. Ah. So... So the dusty depot, which um, I'll, I'll get a, I'll need to go. So 
I'm definitely going to be busy getting some screenshots of the rest okay. of it. Anyway, so, so, so what we're looking at right now is what what appears to be what it used to be. Well, so actually, it looks like that, um, just like, so Dusty Depot, it, the meteor hit that area and it's changed, the, it's changed that part of the map. Chests can be found in the guard towers, inside the crates, and inside the small testing rooms. You can even go back to the old Dusty Depot and find old and new areas for loot. Hmm. Ah. So that... That's the... That's... So that's what's new. That's... That's... That's been rebuilt. That's built in the area where the meteor hit. And be careful, this area is new, so it's going to be filled with other players. If you want to keep out of the crowd, consider gliding somewhere else. Yes, because you, because you, because you jump out of, uh -huh. um, jump out of a, um, jump out of a, a flying what? bus for, uh, a, a, a flying vehicle. Uh, flying machine, we'll just go with flying machine. <laughs> uh, skydive, and then open your parachute, and you glide to an area in the map to mm -hmm. start, start work. Rusty Reels. Ah, so this this is one of the new locations. Rusty Reels is a brand new location that was not created by the almighty meteor. Actually, <clears throat> let's put a bit more emphasis on, let's say, uh, not created by the almighty <laughs> meteor. I <laughs> say print them to something like that. It's, <laughs> yeah, that's, a, it. that's a bit of, that's a bit of, <laughs> that's a bit of, what's the word I'm looking for? Punch. Impact. Oh, very clever! Impact Meteor Strike. Yep. Very, very clever. <laughs> See, I mean, who thought having a guest here would be very handy? <laughs> <laughs> There's a big focus on movie magic this season. Ooh! And Rusty Reel seems to be the headquarters for all things filming. It's a drive-in theatre complete with the big screen, eating areas, and even a small filming room. Ah, that's actually quite, that's actually pretty good. Sadly, Rusty Reels was not immune to the meteors that hit and has a decent sized crater at its centre. At least it gives you the chance at least it gives you the chance for some anti-gravity. Probably use that in the filming room. Mm. Ooh. Secret layer. Ooh. Oh, I like the look of this. I like the look of this. A new mansion was added to the east side of the map, southeast of Lonely Lodge. It's, an, it's a nice addition that adds chests and loot to an area that was simply empty before. But there was an awesome, but there's an awesome secret for those that stick around and search the basement. Hmm. Okay. That's vague. In a way, oh, that looks cool. That must be the basement. Which is Heading crazy. And it looks like it's a, there's a fire there as well. Heading downstairs will lead you to a secret layer complete with a meeting table. That's oh. what it is. Meeting table, computers, and a control system. There's even an easy escape out of the out the side of the cliff. The location is far from the centre of the map, but it's absolutely worth the trip. Hmm. Well, I suppose if you if you want to land if you want to try and glide and land there first, I guess that would put you in an, at an advantage. Oh, another layer. Secret villains layer. <laughs> Just the name alone, I like the sound of. You can't let the good guys be the only ones with a cool layer. I mean, exactly. Why have a good guys layer if you're not going to have a bad guys layer at the same time? You've got a stylish treehouse going on. <laughs> yeah, it, it does look pretty good. Yeah, I'll, say, I'll, say, I'll, show, I'll showcase the screenshots uh, when I put this all together in the editing process. On the west side of the map, east of Snobby Shores, I was like, they do come up with weird and wacky yeah. names for some for the areas of the map. It's a tall mountain on the west. On the west side of the mountain is a very cool layer that blends into the side of the cliff. That is actually really good. You'll have to land on the mountain or build up to check out the layer for yourself. Just like the other layer, this one has control system, a garage, and even a living quarters. Mm. The big difference here is that this layer is equipped with a massive nuke. Wait, what? Massive nuke? <laughs> yeah. 
Is it's this a double take there? You're like a master of wet. <laughs> Is this our first hint at season five? Nice. I think that is possibly all oh my word. Foreshadowing. Um, that is brilliant foreshadowing if that does lead into season five. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Tilted Towers still stands. Okay, one of the more surprising changes is what's new in Tilted Towers. For most of season three, Span speculated that the meteor would hit this popular zone. But Tilted Towers ultimately went unscathed for the most part. Unless you liked the building in the centre with the three floors, then you'll probably be disappointed. Ah! Yeah, there's the impact. Hmm. With half of one building gone, the only other change is the new crater from a, from a smaller meteor. This will give players access to hop rocks granting anyone who grabs one anti-gravity for a short time. Hmm. So the hop rocks... So the hop rocks... Uh, hop rocks provide anti-gravity. Interesting. Yeah. Another secret base. <laughs> That's three bases just for this season alone. That's brilliant. I should get myself back into playing it because I, mean, I, I, I have played a few games of Fortnite and there was one point where I managed to get into the top 20 without basically doing anything because <laughs> I was just running around the map trying to find people to kill and then I just saw the player count dwindle yeah. and I was just like bop, 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 and I thought ah this is going to be a lot easier than I thought getting mm -hmm. into the one of the higher rankings ever head over to Salty Springs and enter the blue house on the east side of town head down the stairs to enter the basement but take note that the stairs keep going head down and enter the third basement to find a secret base with, shock and surprise, another control system <laughs> and a gym. Oh! Will you be able to use the gym though? Increase your health. Yeah. Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Goodbye prison. Oh! So the prison got annihilated by the meteor strike. Wow. Brutal. While the prison on the south southeastern part of the map was never named a location, it was still a great source of loot and chests. Apparently that needed to change as a meteor hit the main building of the prison, destroying a majority of the jail cells and the cafeteria area. Oh. That's going to require a serious amount of rebuilding. Mm -hmm. Pizza. Ah, pizza pit. Now we're getting somewhere. This change doesn't offer any kind of advantage, but it's worth pointing out. Okay, fair play. The pizza restaurant at Tomato Town. <laughs> the, okay. The, the, the sign for the sign for the pizza the sign for pizza pit is a tomato. <laughs> wow. Okay, it took me a minute to recognise that. Right. Uh, tomato Town received a nice big sign. I mean, and I've just pointed it out. Just that it doesn't add any loot or chest to the area, but it does spice <laughs> up. But it does spice up the area a bit. Okay. So it does nothing. <laughs> it does nothing, but again, like they said, worth pointing out. Gotta love to our town. More to do in Moisty Mire. Hmm. A movie production company has moved into Mo Moisty Mire. Before the update, the area was known for its great resource of wood and the neat tree house in the middle. Now it has stages, production areas, a place to eat, and even a place to relax. So it's just, it's essentially turned into a movie, it's turned into a movie studio. Yeah. With these changes come more opportunities for loot and chests. Well, given the fact that they've expanded, mm -hmm. it's easy to see why. Uh, but some of the trees that made this area so likeable have been removed. Is the trade-off worth it? Mm. Well... Cutting down some trees to make air, to make room for make, turning it into a movie studio, you can understand why. Yeah. And a new cabin as well. Oh. They have no, they have been very generous with these change with these changes for season four. I have a feeling I might need to split this one into two. I have a feeling I might need to split this podcast into two parts, just like last week. We'll get there. Uh, a new cabin. To the west of Shifty Shafts are two buildings. One of them is a house and the other is a medium-sized shack. As of the start of Season 4, this is no longer the case. 
While the house is still there, the shack has been updated into a two-story log cabin. More loot in chests. And if you decided to maybe destroy the log cabin, that'll give you that'll give you a fair amount of wood for building. Yeah. The motel update. I'm honestly, how many? Right, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, we haven't got haven't got much left to cover, thankfully. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, where were we? We can motel update. That's where we were. Not much has changed at the motel, but the small differences are worth noting. A small meteor crashed through the motel sign. Mm, yep, we can definitely see the damage. Yep. Uh, and hit the bus that used to sit in the parking lot. Good grief, they took out a bus! Wow, I was hoping there was nobody in it. <laughs> that bus has now slammed into the motel and the impact left a small crater. Oh. Hmm. So I'm guessing there, that must be the bus. And there, that's the small crater from the impact. Unbreakable rocks. Hmm. Where's the Hulk when you need him? <laughs> yeah, don't worry folks, I'm still not spoiling Infinity War. I'm not that cruel. I've still not seen it, so don't. <laughs> <laughs> I won't, because according to Disney, is it, cause, because according to Disney and Marvel's campaign, hashtag Thanos demands my silence. <laughs> Well, the official hashtag is Thanos demands your silence, but you know what I mean. Thanks to the meteor that created the giant crater in the centre of the map, new darker rocks have been thrown out of the earth and onto the surface. Most of these can be found around the crater and they help give you a place to cover when you're in the big open fields. One landed in Loot Lake giving you a place to run to if you're stuck in the water. Two chests can also spawn at this rock. We're definitely not short on options, that's for certain. Mm. Craters galore. Well, I think that one's kind of a given. Besides the giant crater that created Dusty Divot, several smaller craters have been left scattered across the map. Trucks and cars surrounding the crater sometimes have chests, while the craters themselves have the hot rocks that will give you brief anti-gravity abilities. We've already covered the cr cr craters at Tilted Towers, the prison, Risky Wheels, and the motel. So here are the remaining craters. East of Fatal Fields. East of Junk Junction. Mm, okay. <laughs> South of Haunted Hills. They do like to use a lot of alliteration. Yep. East of Retail Row. And this is the last one. Oh. A new filming location. Hmm. If you ever visited Junk Junction in the northwestern part of the map, it's likely that you visited the two houses to the east of the scrapyard. Go there during season four and you'll notice that it has changed. Go on to the houses and instead you'll find two small brick sheds and a large warehouse. Inside the warehouse is what looks like a filming setup. There Area lights and cameras. Uh, the, the area lights and cameras and the set looks like the inside of a house. Hmm. The inside of a house. Inside a house. And uh, it's not shed. Because <laughs> the houses are gone. Well. Very interesting changes. Hmm. So. I do like the nod to the meteor. The, the meteor, uh, uh, whereabouts was it? The Dusty Divot? I do like... Ah, yeah. yes, 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 yes. That was way back up at the top. That, there it was. Yeah. The, yeah, that's it. That was Avery. Yeah, but for me, it's, it, it's the villain's lair that's got the massive nuke. Mm. Which begs me to ask, what are you trying to portray here? Fortnite? Or fallout. <laughs> anyway.
Here comes the music. Boom, 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 boom. I'm gonna shoot you right down. Boom, 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 boom. boom. The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus update adds a new character and over 800 runes. Right. Let's see. I said, because of where we're sitting, I said, I'm normally sitting right at the desk so I can actually read it, no problem. But because of where we're situated and the, the setup we've got, um, having to increase the zoom on these articles so we can actually read them. Really. The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus is a collection of add ons for the, collect for the Binding of Isaac Rebirth and Afterbirth, respectively. The definitive edition of the Breakout Roguelike Shooter and a separate DLC pack. Today, Afterbirth Plus received its final update. The Forgotten Update, interestingly, which adds new items, new unlocks, new trinkets, new enemies, and a new character, and over 800 new rooms to explore. Wow. Talk about, talk about expanding, talk about increasing the lifespan of a game. <laughs> As creator Edmund McMillan said on Tumblr, it also comes with a new boss. Plus, it's free to players who own Afterbirth Plus. Earlier this month, Macmillan and James ID released the first trailer for their upcoming new York project, The Legend of Bumbo. Yeah, Bum hyphen bow. <laughs> yeah, go figure. <laughs> a match for dungeon crawler about a distinctly isaac blob named Bumbo. Mm, makes sense. And his favourite gold coin. Hmm. Back in March, he also revisited New Genix. A strange little cat game, which Macmillan says is back on track, but still a few years away. Okay. So, New Genics, that must be, I think it's, it's an upcoming game, probably an indie game. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. But like I say, talk about increasing the lifespan of a game. <laughs> 800 rooms. Yeah. That'll definitely, keep people, that'll definitely keep players busy for a while. Right. Right, we've got two pieces of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds news to cover, so let's get into those. Pause that because that is not relevant. Again, increase the zoom scene. There we go. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is getting a new update on PC, and it's a big one. Update 12 introduces a new weapon, the SLR and a new vehicle on Miramar. It also kicks off the start of, an, of the new ranked season, adds the ability to select which map you want to play, and brings a bunch of balance changes. Huh. Right. The SLR is a DMR that uses 7.62 rounds and contains 10 bullets per magazine, or 20 when extended. Must be some sort of, must be some sort of pistol or something. Mm. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, developer PUBG Corp notes the SLR is more powerful than the SKS, but also comes with more recoil. Because mm. the recoil just boom. yeah. Miramar's new vehicle, meanwhile, is a muscle car named the Mirado. PUBG Corp says the car contains four seats and can be found in downtown areas and on main city streets. The developer states that the Murado is the fastest way to blaze down a highway. <laughs> ACDC, anyone? <laughs> highway to hell. <laughs> this is the same update that made its way to the test server just recently. It will be released for the live game after PUBG's servers recover from scheduled maintenance. That downtime is expected to start at 7pm Pacific Time, 10pm Eastern Time on May 2nd. That's... Today, in fact. Oh! But there'll be 3am 
that will be 3 a.m. UK time here and midday AET. I believe that's Australia. AET? I have no idea. Right. AET time zone. Yeah. Yeah. EAT, Australian Eastern Standard Time. Interesting. And midday on a midday on May the third, Australian Australian Eastern. And to last for four hours. Okay. The service coming back online will mark the start of the new ranked season after the current season ended just recently. So like Fortnite, it's got seasons as well. Interesting. Right. This update also brings with it a bunch of new attachments, including the duck build for shotguns. Wait, hang on, what? New attachment for shotguns? The duck build? The duck build. For shotguns. That redu it reduces vertical pellet spread, several grips, and two new scopes. Here's how, here's how PUBG Corp describes them all. Right. The duck build, for some bizarre reason. A new attachment for shotguns. It reduces the vertical pellet spread. So I would imagine instead of going like uh, like that, it will just go. Okay. Hmm. But increases the horizontal bullet spread. Hmm. Attachable to the S1897 and S12K. Light grip, it reduces recoil recovery time, but increases vertical and horizontal recoil. Attachable to ARs, SMGs, DMRs, which will be UM, UMP9, AUG, M416, SCAR-L, and SKS. Thumb grip, it reduces vertical recoil, but increases horizontal recoil. It also increases reco the recoil recovery time. Attachable to ARs, SMGs, DMRs. UMP9, AUG, M416, yeah, so basically, basically the same ones I just mentioned, and half grip. It reduces, so the, so the half grip reduces vertical and horizontal recoil, and also reduces recoil recovery time. Attachable to, attachable to pretty much everything, um, ARs, SMGs, and DMRs. Oh, it's attachable to the vector as well. Scope times three. This scope, this scope has fixed three times magnification with an with an illuminated rec reticle. It's discoverable as a common world drop item. Scope, uh, si um, where's the next scope? Scopes, uh, six scopes times six. This scope has a variable three times uh, three. Three times to six time mag three times to six time magnification. It's discoverable as a rare world drop item. Hmm. Okay. The weapon balance changes, meanwhile, have been discussed previously and are fairly extensive. In short, the goal is to make more weapons viable so that assault rifles are not so widely considered the best option at all times. Well, that's, that's understandable because, I mean, shotguns, you can use them at close range. But mind you, that's pretty much all you can use them for. You can only use shotguns at close range to have the maximum damage. Uh, it sees a drop in damage for a number of assault rifles, but an increase for various pistols, SMGs and LMGs, submachine guns and light machine guns. Other adjustments include level 3 helmets now only being found in supply drops, improvements to Miramar, the addition and removal of some buildings in colour, and a variety of bug fixes. You can see the full patch notes for update 12 on Steam. Yeah, it's, all, it's also available on Xbox uh, right now as part of Xbox Game Preview, but that's still in like... Uh, on the on the Xbox, it's still in beta phase, essentially. But anyway, um, let's see. I'll say like so we've got another piece of PUBG news. Forty three percent of online gamers have used cheats to gain competitive advantages. I think it's more than that, to be honest. Forty three seems a little low. <laughs> hmm. Right, let's see. 
privacy. Cyber, cyber security specialist Erdeto has revealed the results of a new survey on game cheats and the impact of cheaters on users' online gaming experiences. They found an unsurprising 60% of gamers surveyed had been negatively impacted by cheaters at some point, while a further 43% of users admitted to using third-party tools to cheat. Hmm. Now, I'm no mathematician, but if 43% of gamers have used cheats, the percentage of gamers impacted by cheaters at some point should be far higher than 60%. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much what you were saying. I mean, 43%, that's less than half of the gamer base, but it pretty much impacts everyone. Mm -hmm. Those ad numbers don't add up. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, the Iodato Global Gaming Survey encompassed some 9,436 gamers and found out a whole bunch of info on cheats, cheating, and the effect they have on a game's success. I think you're always gonna I think you're always gonna find that these days. You're always gonna find somebody to that exploits the system True. and creates these cheats and just so that so that they can gain the advantage and as a result ruin the experience for everybody else. Doesn't that take the fun out of it though? Like that's the reason you're playing. Exactly. Like, why would you pay for a game and not play it? <laughs> not, and, not, and, not, and not play it properly, exactly. Uh, I'm not a whole bunch of different games in this week. Uh, success. If you've been reading this and scratching your head as to what you've heard, wh as to where you've heard the name Erdato from before, I should highlight that this is the very same Erdato that bought out Denuvo a few months ago. Hmm, that was news to me. With that out of the way, onwards with the data. Let's see. Gamers were surveyed in six different countries. China, Germany, Japan, South Korea, UK, and the US. That one's hardly, that's hardly surprising. Yeah. I mean, I mean, China's interesting because China don't really do gaming that much. I mean, I mean South Korea, they're yeah. massive on their games, especially StarCraft. UK and the US, again, hardly surprising. Germany, fair play. Uh, and Japan, again, hardly surprising. With 77% saying they would probably stop playing a multiplayer game if they discovered online players were cheating. Fair enough. And I don't blame them. Yeah. I don't blame them. It's not fair. Exactly. In terms of what this means for the publisher's bottom line, 48% said they'd be less likely to buy in-game content if they suspected others were cheating. Taking all those numbers into consideration, that is still a very sizable amount. Aha. Uh -huh. Almost half. Yeah. Uh, Udetto's PR angle on this is naturally... Is na uh, on this is naturally that this has a massive impact on the revenues of mm. game publishers if they do not adequately project, protect multiplayer online games from cheating. Yeah, because there's a lot of games right now that are, that are online only. I mean, the first, I mean, I mean, the Star Wars Battlefront game that came out in 2015, that's basically online only. Uh, Destiny and Destiny 2, they're online only. Overwatch, that's online only. I mean, I mean, with with pretty much everyone playing online these days, either through Steam or Xbox Live or PlayStation Plus, you are gonna fuck. It is inevitable. You are gonna have people that exploit that exploit you to the systems. True. But then again, if they don't do anything to prevent that, then they're losing customers. And, the, and, and as a result, losing revenue in the long run. Yeah. Just 12% of online gamers said they'd never been negatively impacted by cheats, while 8% said they, they were always impacted. Mm. 
Cheating is most rife among younger age groups, with 12% of 18 to 24 year olds claiming they were always negatively impacted by cheats. Now, if we had a mathematician here with uh, with us going through all these percentages mm -hmm. based on the numbers we have, he'd be, they'd be, they'd be like just like boom, 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 boom. It was this, 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 and this. But we don't exactly have a an expert mathematician here, so it, it, it's just it's just basic just basic math at this point. But yeah. we don't have time to go through all the percentages to work out all the numbers for all the things they mention. If you want to see just how ineffective surveys like this can be, though, particularly in terms of how question how the questions are framed, then look no further than De Nouveau's own statistic that fifty seven percent of gamers claimed to have never used third party tools to cheat, while twelve percent admitted to this. Somewhere along the line, thirty one percent of those surveyed must have been telling little porkies. Yep. Now, why does that not surprise me? Oh yeah, 57 and 12, 69, 31. Yeah, that brings it to 100. These results clearly indicate that cheating in multiplayer online games is a growing problem, said Reynard Blaukovich. Sounds Russian. <laughs> it definitely sounds Russian. I do not know how to pronounce that. Uh, Reinhardt, I'll we'll, we'll just go with Reinhardt, that makes it easier. Uh, managing, director, managing, bleh, managing Director of De Nouveau at, at Iodeto. Furthermore, the global nature of these games means that it doesn't matter where the cheating is taking place, as it has the potential to negatively impact other gamers around the world, and this sets a big challenge for game publishers. Elmar Fisher, Sales Director of De Nouveau at Iodeto, Oh. Wait, I've been pronouncing that. Ertedo. Ertedo. I've been pronouncing that wrong the whole time. He believes that cheating also poses a great financial mm -hmm. risk, which is which what what we've literally just mentioned. If cheaters are allowed to prosper, the impact on other players can subsequently lead to lower game traffic and shrinking revenues. It is therefore crucial for game publishers to secure their games against cheating to ensure a great experience for gamers all over the world who want to play by the rules. I mean, I've always been someone that's played by the rules. I mean, I would never do something like this. Cheats are a huge prob... Cheats are a huge probable... Pro pro probability? Somebody needs to. Somebody needs. They need like, to proofread this. They need to proof. It. They need to proofread these articles before they actually go ahead. It's a huge problem in some games. We'll, we'll go with huge problem. I think that's what they're going for. Most notably, PUBG and Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege. That's uh, that's a Tom Clancy game by Ubisoft. Um, in recent months, and it's clearly important that measures are made to tackle them. This entire survey has been conducted by. You know, Hang on, what? Hang on a second, hang on. No, I was right first time, Iodeto. Yeah, they definitely need to proofread these articles for spell checking. Right, uh, Iodeto. Um, the entire survey has been conducted by Iodeto and De Nouveau for the purposes of good PR, though. So you'll have to make, so you have to make of it what you will. It's all in the aim of signal boosting De Nouveau's anti-cheat technology that can allegedly used to prevent hackers from manipulating or distorting data and code to gain a competitive advantage. Iodeto's answers to cheat is, predictably enough, use De Nouveau, pro De Nouveau protection. Are you willing to put up with De Nouveau DRM if it can prevent cheats? Or is Iodeto just trying to put a positive spin on De Nouveau's controversial anti-piracy software? Mm. So, what do we make of that? Well, I, think, I mean, I, mean I, I have no idea how the software works because I, it's yeah. a, I say, I've, I've not actually played player on those battlegrounds. Do you think people are actually going to willing to go to that hassle just to stop some cheats? 
I think if push comes to shove, I think it might be their only option in the long run if push comes to shove. Do you think people that rely on cheats to succeed will stop playing then if they can? That's something. That I think I think people like that are always going to find new ways to exploit the system. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. It's essentially once you fix one issue, another one comes along. Yeah, that's perfect world. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, so anyway, uh, before we get into the next article, how long have we been going for? Hmm. It's over 45 minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to need to split this into two parts again, just like I did last week because of the amount, because of the amount of news that I covered. 